Hi everybody from yet another chilly but very beautiful morning here in central Portugal. I have what I think is a very exciting video series coming up for you guys. I'm working on my shower. I'm going to try to turn the darkest, dingiest corner of my house into something that is less spider webby and less scary. And I'm going to do it by using natural materials. I'll be using cob, I'll be using lime, natural plasters, wattle and daub techniques, and who knows what else. I'm also going to be drilling into some seriously hard granite stone to try to put a window in and a lot of stuff. I've got a lot of plans for this corner and I'm really excited to share them with you. I'm working on it right now. I don't know how far I'm gonna get on this project, but I'm gonna aim to work on it until this thing is finished and I'm gonna share the process the whole way. So I don't know how many videos will be in this series just yet because I'm still in the thick of the work. But as an exciting little start to this video, let's go back to the beginning when I first got my place and it was a blank canvas. I don't think I've shared too much footage from way back in the day. So let's go check out my house as it was day one when I bought it. And then we'll go through some footage as I build the shower up to what it is today. I'm excited for this video. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll check in again at the end.
it's windy and it's super cold out here. I have the fire on and it's mornings like these that make me very happy to be able to stay inside and get started on the shower project. You've seen work on the shower corner from the very beginning. It's come a long way, but I still have a lot of work to do. So let's head back to that corner and check it out and see what my next steps are. Behold, the other side of the shower and bathroom. This is gonna change a lot because I'll be working on that wall where the black plastic is. So I thought I'd get a before shot. And so through the power of editing, I give you a cleanish corner for me to work in. I've taped up the drain so that little bits of dust and dirt don't get into the pipes. I'll put another tarp down here on the bottom. And then I'm gonna be investigating this hole because my plan is to put this porthole somehow into this space. And I'm not exactly sure how to do it, but the first thing I need to do is just investigate the wall itself to see what the stones are doing. I'll have to go outside, see what's happening out there, and also see if I can easily remove that large stone just right here, because I think that's the perfect location for this window. So I'm up on the scaffolding. I'm ready to investigate the window hole, but I wanted to chat first about the order of things and how I'm very quickly realizing that I might want to do one thing, like the tool shed, and go full steam ahead on that without really fully considering all the other things that have to happen first. So with the tool shed, I need to figure out the gray water pipes. I need to figure out how to plumb in the future washing machine, the foundation. I need to figure exactly where it's going to go. I need to figure out the layout for the rest of the space. There's all these things that I didn't think about until I was ready to get started on the tool shed and then couldn't. And this window is another example of that. I can't really point this wall completely until I figure out what's happening with the window, where it's going to go. And same with the inside of the shower. I couldn't finish plastering that thing until I bought the window, decided what I was going to do. I also need to build the actual wall where the black plastic is. But on the other side of that wall, I have to make some decisions about whether I want shelving, what's going to go there. So there's just all these little decisions to make along the way. And oftentimes the thing you want to do can't happen until a dozen other littler things happen first. In a way, it's not even the things that I have to do that are the hardest. It's the decisions that I have to make because after you make one decision, so many other things depend on that as well. And you want to make sure to make the right choice. So. That's something that I'm encountering a lot these days, and I just wanted to share that with you guys. I'm sure a lot of people out there already realize this, but I think I just didn't realize how much it would slow me down. Um, and now I know, so I can plan better for the future. So let's get this weird plastic bag of rock wall out of this hole, and I can investigate the stonework and see whether this is gonna be a very simple job or a very difficult job, or somewhere in between. I have to go to the other side to see exactly what's going on, but my thinking is that this stone here is the big stone on the outside that I'm hoping to remove to make space for the window. I guess I'll just have to go look and see where this hole is on the other side and then I'll, I'll know for sure which is the correct stone. And outside, I'll probably just keep the stonework the same outside. Oh no, maybe I won't. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. Maybe maybe this stone won't work. So this section of wall isn't actually supporting the roof. The roof is supported by rafters that go across a big beam that goes across the entire house. So I'm hoping this isn't some structural terrifying situation. Uh, I'm not making a massive space. I'm not making a giant window. I'm just working with what's already here. So with some supports and things in the right spots, I think I can get away with this without too much uh, anxiety happening. But let's go look inside and see uh, what stone I want to remove and try to come up with a plan for this. Okay, so frustratingly, it's this stone that would want to come out in order to get the window where I want it to go. However, that's not where the actual window is. So if I was to take this stone out to put the window in, it wouldn't line up with the actual space on the other side. And it would mean that I'd have to be taking out a bunch of stones on the other side as well. 
which I don't know if that makes sense. So I'm not sure what my plan is. It might make more sense to either try to chip away this stone here and a little bit of this one, take these ones out and try to get it in here. I don't really know. I'm going to draw some circles and see what it looks like. I don't know if marker is the best option here. I don't know. I'm not as crazy about that location as I would be if I could just stick it there. I don't like that it's not centered, but I do kind of like that it's sort of is off center so that it actually shines over to where my bed is. I assume eventually I'll have some kind of door in the bathroom, but I don't think I'll do a door all the way to the top. So it'd be kind of neat to be able to get some light in from this side, shining over to my bed area. I don't know. I just don't know. I, I think getting this stone that's here out would be fine. The problem is on the other side. So I'm gonna go take a look over there again and yeah, just keep assessing and try to come up with a solution to the puzzle. But one thing's for sure, this guy doesn't need to be in there. Okay, so looking at it from this side, this is very fun to film. I'd need to take off a bit of this stone. I'd probably do that with a big drill. Uh, get in there with the long drill bits and then chisel it away. And then I think I needed to take off also a little bit of this side. Uh, and that's actually good because it leads sort of right out to the opening. So this stone can stay where it is. I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with the look of the outside, but I will try to make some kind of a, a screen to sort of sit inside somewhere. Probably something that I can take in and out. Oh, that didn't help much. <laughs> And so, of course, another thing that I've forgotten about completely is the wobbliness of this thing. My initial plan was to sort of brace it in this direction with a nice chunky diagonal piece and make it kind of a feature of the structure itself. But I think I'd rather just have a nice clean wall here. And so what I'll probably end up doing is chipping out some of the lime, probably on either side, um, try to guess where the spaces between the holes are, and stick some wood in there and kind of brace it from either side using the wall and then reinforcing everything with the lime and the clay. I don't know if that's a good plan, but it's my plan. Because yeah, it's got a, quite a bit of wobble there to it. So here is my wobbliness solution. This wants to lean in this way. It's, it's fine in the other direction for reasons I don't know. So I've pushed it back made a line where it's more or less level and I've pounded in these little stakes and it's holding it from coming forward and therefore it's keeping the whole thing very sturdy. So I'm pretty pleased to have this done. I didn't think it was gonna work. It did. I'm surprised, but now I can move on to something else. I wasn't exactly sure how I was gonna do that. So I'm happy to see this solution worked. And now I think I might, I might just do something mindless. So up here in spiderweb land, I have a whole bunch of old clay mortar to take out of the walls and repack with stronger clay mortar that's reinforced with straw. Basically this red stuff. So I'm gonna mix up a batch of cob while it's nice and sunny out there and chip out some stuff and, and fill the wall back in. I've been holding off on doing this job because I wasn't yet sure what I wanted to do with the ceiling. I have a plan for the ceiling now. I'll go into that in another video, but because I know what I'm doing up there, it means that I can build the clay up to the top and I don't have to leave um, as much space as I previously thought. And while I'm doing all that, I will ponder the window location. Okay, let's get dusty. chipping away 
And I guess I'll just try to do the shower part. I'll try to get it all done today. I won't focus on that part just yet. And if I can get some clay onto the wall, at least in the gaps, today that'll also be pretty amazing because the clay underneath will need to dry before I start putting the lime over top of it. So that'll need a few days at least, or maybe even longer, I'm not sure. So I've got a bunch of chipping to do, and I'll check back in when it's closer to being complete. So I'm making some progress. It looks a little sketchy, like the rocks are just kind of hanging there, but they're in pretty securely, most of them. And I'm just taking a little break and I'm gonna go mix up some clay and start stuffing the holes. I've mixed up a batch of cob. I've got the stuff I'm gonna use in there. So I'm not gonna show the process of cob mixing in this video because I have a whole video called building a cob wall or something like that that goes through the process of mixing. But just briefly, cob is a beautiful, beautiful mix of sand, clay, and straw and water. I get the clay from my friend and neighbor who lives nearby who recently did roadworks and has loads and loads of beautiful clay. Otherwise, I don't really know where to get it, so I'm quite lucky with that. Okay, so I'm going to take this beautiful mixture and stuff it in the holes in the wall. It's quite difficult to film while I'm working with cob because this is what my hands end up looking like. But I'll do my best. Let's go stuff some holes. Oh, I need a stick. All right, I think you get the idea. Sticking some clay into some holes. I do wanna explain a couple of things. The reason I'm using clay, a lot of people would wonder why am I using sort of such a medieval kind of material. I love it. It's got amazing properties for regulating humidity is the main reason I wanna use as much clay as I possibly can. Lime does it as well, but clay is even better. And it kind of soaks in the moisture when the room is too humid and releases it when the room is too dry. So if you're in sort of a natural earthen house with natural plasters, it should just feel really, really nice. And that's what I'm going for. So I kind of, just for the way I'm designing things, will have clay going just over the shower. So imagine this lime section as kind of like a shower cubicle and this clay render will stretch all the way to this wall. And then the kitchen will be lime, maybe just for durability just that's what I ended up doing. Um, so I'm gonna leave this hole here until I find a big stone to stick in there. I might also fill this one with lime. Uh, I do think it is a bit stronger than the clay and also I have a lot more lime than I have clay so it's easier for me to come by lime than it is clay. And I'm just basically gonna continue um, filling in these holes and getting muddy and I'll check back in uh, when I'm a bit closer to being done. It's very enjoyable, but it is very messy, which makes moving the camera around and filming things quite tricky. So I'll say goodbye for now and I'll check in again very soon. Okay, the fire is on. I've made a fairly hideous mess, but I'm making some progress. I decided to just go full, and it's not really render, but I sort of decided to pack the holes, but also pack on a layer of clay as well, because I have to build the wall out quite a bit. Actually, maybe I don't have to build the walls up quite a bit. This is a lot more plumb than I was expecting. It looks really good, actually. So perhaps I got a little carried away there. I wonder what this side looks like. Uh, yeah, that looks okay, sort of where it is now. So I guess I'm not gonna worry too much about building it out a lot. I've left this clay free because I'll probably end up packing that with lime instead. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'll come with kind of a, a line and then the window will be sort of in there somewhere. And I'd like to have kind of a design element that goes up and over the window and kind of encases the window or encircles the window in the shower. That might seem weird. I'm not totally sure, but either way, I'd rather not have clay underneath lime if I can help it. 
it's just better not to have changes in the materials if you can avoid it. So if I'm thinking I might have lime in this part here from there, I'll just pack the hole with lime instead of clay. So that's it. I guess I'm done for the night. Uh, I'm really feeling energized, but also tired somehow. I'm quite satisfied with the work I got done. I really love working with clay. It's such a great material to work with. I'll show you a bit more of it um, when I do the wall, uh, but it's a little hard to film up here, so I haven't been filming so much of that. So I guess the last thing to do for today is plug that hole back up with the weird bag of insulation and relax. Hello. Goodbye. Okay, I feel like I got a lot done in this first little push on work on the shower. So I'm gonna wrap that video up there. There's so much more to do, but I think I had a pretty good start. However, in the process of working on the shower, I realized that I have to figure out pipes and plumbing and how do I connect the shower to the wall and all that stuff that I had given zero thought to. Right now, I basically just hang a shower head on a nail and stick a bucket on the floor and drop a USB pump into that, and that's my shower. It drains away, and life is good. But regular people showers have actual things stuck on the wall and have actual plumbing sticking out the wall. So I need to figure that out. I was in the shop yesterday looking at plumbing stuff, and that seems like it's gonna be a whole learning adventure that I'm weirdly looking forward to. So that's gonna come fairly soon as well. I have a lot of stuff to do, but I'm making good progress and I'm really, really enjoying it. And that's all I've got to say about the shower for this video. So as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, which will be more shower stuff. And I'm excited. I'm excited to keep pushing on with this. So until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.